it it's freaking back day yeah, we know this I know you know already you read the title come on let's just jump straight into it so basic plan for back it's actually there kind of is no basic plan you know there's a little bit of an overarching method that I kind of follow when it comes to my back workouts but there's no uh, you know I don't have any particularly strong reasoning for some of my exercise selections I just know what movements I like and if I want to like you know hit my lats on a specific movement I'll probably do some pull downs that's one of the best ones for for lats in my opinion just based on the fact that I can activate them with a ton of weight super strong well that's not the point but I can put a lot of tension on the muscle that's why I start off chest with heavy incline pressing I can put a lot of tension on the muscle you know, you can do you can do your sets in a way where you use really light weight. I, I mean, you can do a set that's just as intense as like a fucking one rep max with fucking you know twenty five percent of your max just by way of you know reaching complete fucking failures, burning like crazy. You get the idea. But you know, I um, I typically end up following the basic workout plan of heavier shit in the beginning, so compounds. You know, heavy pull downs, heavy rows, and then transitioning more so into like squeezing movements like pullovers or perhaps light rows where I really focus on squeezing rather than just, you know, throw around a lot of weight. But so, you know, I, I'll, uh, with back, I don't really mess with like a lat focus day or a trap, you know, mid back focus day. Um, you know, everybody's kind of heard the saying that like pull downs are more for width and rows are more for thickness of the back. And to an extent, I think I, I probably believe that. Right? You're definitely not gonna get thick mid traps by doing only pull downs. And if you, you know, if you know how to kind of differentiate like what part of your back is being worked after a set, if you're a beginning, it's a little bit harder. Oh, <laughs> whoa, holy shit. A girl was just like fucking really waving at me. I had no idea what she was doing. There's a deer right next to the room and almost hit him. So, so what the fuck was I? Yeah, yeah. If you've lifted for long enough, after you finish a set of cable rows, you know your traps are fucking feeling it. And after a set of pull downs, you know your lats are fucking on fire. Right? That's uh, it's pretty basic knowledge. Like you, honestly, you don't even have to really be trained to be able to understand that. So, you know, when I do back, I pretty much start off with either some kind of heavy row or some kind of heavy pull down and uh, just kind of alternate between lat focus stuff and, you know, mid back rowing stuff. Like, for whatever reason, in my mind, I kind of feel like I'll finish the back workout with a more complete pump if I do it in that way. Because I think if I were to, like, just do all my pull down movements first, like all my lat. Well, really, all my lat focused work is pull downs and pullovers. So, if I were to just do all those first and then finish off with rows, I kind of feel like the pump would be sort of incomplete, like a little bit more biased towards you know the rows at the end. So, that may just be a personal thing, but I kind of want I want to just uh, you know finish back off with a whole fucking pump. So. Going to uh, going to a gym with a pretty fucking solid variety of equipment. Uh, it's kind of far away from where I live, so it's like I don't want to go there all the time. But I definitely like some variability in the gyms, just because I mean not every gym has everything. I guess if I had the perfect gym, then I would only go there. But if you can afford the luxury of the ten dollar a month Planet Fitness plus a couple others. I like it. I think it's worth it. But it's, it's totally unnecessary. Right? I, could be, I could be probably comparably big if I only lifted a Planet Fitness. I'm not saying I would be exactly as big because I wouldn't have access to you know, barbell bench or incline dumbbell, which I definitely think kind of built my chest. But you, know, you get the idea. It's not about the machines. Right? A good craftsman doesn't blame his tools. Someone that seriously wants to get big is going to develop a pretty, you know, impressive physique just with, you know, a rack, pull-up bar, and 
dumbbells in his basement. So don't get a uh, don't get too jealous of you know when you see somebody posting a workout video in like Oxygen Gym or Gold's Gym. You know, if anything, you can kind of reverse the situation and be like, oh, you fucking cookie cutter. You got all that nice equipment. Oh, I'm sitting here in the fucking dirt with these rusty weights. And then you kind of, <laughs> that's some, that's some Lenny, that's some big Lenny motivation right there. But I've got a little bit of drive ahead of me, so I haven't drank the pre-workout yet. I got a, I got a scoop of hostility and bloodshot. I'll probably start sipping this in maybe, eh, maybe 10 minutes. Because it's about a 40 minute drive. And typically I kind of want to, well, I might even wait a little bit longer than that. Because your pre-workout does not just hit you instantly. You don't just drink it and instantly you're fully saturated with all the caffeine and all the you know nitric oxide. All, all, all sorts of everything that's going on in there. It takes a little while to fucking you know, get going. Like if you take a, if you ever had a pre-workout with beta alanine, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of the itchiness, but it takes a while before you start to feel that tingling sensation. Really, that's the only one where, or that's the only ingredient where I can basically tell it's, um, you know, it's hidden. Because I never really exceed uh, two, three hundred milligrams of caffeine. Sometimes I'll do four on a leg day, so. I'm not just going to do more scoops of the pre-workout, it's almost unnecessary, if all I want is the caffeine. So take one of the little, uh, like let's say you're, you got the blood shot, or no, no, what am I talking about? Let's say you got a scoop of the hostility, I think it's about 275 milligrams of caffeine, but you're some kind of stim junkie for whatever reason, just throw in one of the little caffeine capsules and you're good. So I'm going to fucking play some tunes, get all hyped up. Get ready for back. I might throw a little shoulders in. I might not. Um, not really sure. I guess we'll find out. I think one more here, then we can move on to some kind of fucking, uh, probably a row. So obviously I don't mind when the form breaks down to just barely doing any partials in the stretch position. As far as I'm concerned, that's just fucking burning the lats out more than if I were to just stop at like, you know, whatever arbitrary number of reps when I couldn't get the bar, you know, arbitrarily deep enough. So this is a pretty fucking cool looking row. Uh, I've been to this gym one fucking time before, I got a day pass like two years ago. But it was super cool then, now it's even better. They added all sorts of new shit. But I'm thinking this, uh, this machine's gonna be perfect for some single arm, slow controlled reps. So it'll look totally different than those pull downs where I'm just fucking throwing it around like crazy. With these reps, I'm actually gonna try to, well obviously I won't hold it for a full second, but I'll try to take a moment where like I reach the top of the rep and then 
just get an extra little squeeze. But nothing else to do but fucking hit it. This is a pretty fucking sick machine. But I want to do some uh, chest supported T bar rows. Not going for absolute insane weight on these ones, but I'm definitely not going to be going super slow controlled squeezing reps either. This will probably be a little bit less rapid than the pull downs, but not as slow as those rows over there. So with these, Honestly, when I, whenever I talk about your fucking, oh, your Terry's major, you know, that little, like, if you're looking at the Yuji Road demon back, I'm talking about the eyes. Um, I really feel those doing this kind of pull down or this kind of row. I mean, this is honestly why I do a wide grip straight bar row for seated cable rows, too. Also, I just like it more. So whenever I grab a, onto a fucking pull down, dude, what's going on? Onto a row like this. I always take kind of a wide-ish grip, and I like it to be parallel, not like cambered or anything weird. But let's uh, let's throw it around. That's, eh, I don't know. I think I remember using one of these that I liked more than this one. But definitely feeling that in the mid back, upper lats ish. You get the idea. So let's move on to a, I don't know what, something lat bias. There we go. Okay, so plan now is single arm cable pullovers. I just like, like if I were to grab the rope and do them like this, I mean, sure, I'll get the same squeeze. Uh, no, no, no. I'll get the same stretch. But the squeeze for me, I can go so much harder than one arm at a time. So I'll probably just do two sets here. Reasonably heavy. I mean, 60 pounds on the stack, you know, whatever that means. <laughs> There's an old Nautilus pullover machine, you know, the one from like fucking like Dorian Yates videos where they're screaming in the basement, but I don't fucking like it that much. I mean, maybe he knows something I don't, but whatever. So I tried it, it was like medium weight. I just couldn't fucking feel it, which 
the fact that I'm not going to do it pretty much fits my general training style. I don't want to do something if it doesn't like feel good for you know, whatever muscle I'm targeting. So instead of doing those pullovers, let's just do some fucking pull downs like normal. Lighter weight and really squeeze it. Let's go check the pump. All right, let's see what uh, let's see what kind of pump that elicited. Oh. Okay. Okay. World's gym is freaking badass. Holy shit! They got all sorts of stuff in there. So back day. I mean, I mean, uh, well. Honestly, that's chest supported row, and then, um, fuck, what was the other fucking thing? Oh, yeah, that one seated one hand row. That felt pretty good. I know, I'm reaching for the cluster reduction shake. Yeah, what's going on? Yeah, let's get a quick viewer sighting. There we go. Had to fucking. So fucking just ended up driving home. I already dr I drank the fucking cluster reduction shake when I was sitting there, sitting there yapping. But. What do you gotta do? You gotta do a little bit of yap and post workout sometime. That guy Jared was cool as fuck. New uh new buddy at the worlds, goddamn. So uh, yeah, so that fucking back day was pretty freaking sick. The pull downs were pretty standard, you know, I do that anyway. Those uh those um, um uh, oh yeah, those sort of upper back biased uh, single arm rows, like seated, or I was kind of pulling up here. I like that a lot. Honestly, I think I pushed the weight a little too hard. Um, not in like, just because I think it would have felt better to have gone lighter, but really squeezed harder. Sometimes, slow, controlled, squeezing set, I like it. But then, you know, other times, like doing just sort of a generalized amount of damage to like the lats, those rapid pull downs, that's typically the style I'd want to open with. And then towards the end, like with those pull downs and then those pull, uh, or no. <laughs> those pull overs and then those pull downs at the end. You know, that was in a completely different style of execution than the ones at the beginning where I was going, you know, super quick, whatever. At the end, I'm trying to really just fucking pump out the lats full of blood, so. A little bit slower, squeezing hard as fuck. Honestly, I don't think, well, maybe with some single arm rows. Uh, like that that single arm row, upper back bias, I can squeeze pretty hard on that one. But those single arm pullovers where you just grab the cable by the ball, that's where, honestly, I don't think there's a movement where I can flex my lat harder in the, uh, you know, the contracted position. Hmm. And then that one. Dude, I'm fucking tired. So, current macros, I think about 200 grams of protein, I think about 30 grams of fat, and 140 grams of carbs in the system. It's, it might not be that exactly, I, I, don't, I don't remember, that was just when I plugged in the cluster dextrin shake. But, 1600 calories so far today. Which, like I was saying, since I just finished you know, eating to discomfort, you know, eating more food than I'm actually hungry for, I'm still in kind of a state of like, okay, I don't want to, I don't really want to eat much more food. So it's not too difficult for me to stay. Oh my God. Ah, it's not too hard for me to stay in that 2,500 cal limit. But, you know, like I was saying in the last video, probably in the next week, it'll start to actually get kind of difficult. But, you know, no more... 1400 calorie breakfasts no more like 2000 calorie post workout meal we're getting uh got to be a little bit more what's the word I'm trying to think of i got to be a little bit more thoughtful with how you eat because if you are just you know the layman and you try to start dieting even without tracking your macros let's just say you stop eating junk food let's just say you try to just stop 
cold turkey, basically. You know, I think a lot of people get, holy fuck. Oh, oh. Even people who do track their macros, I think a lot of them get into this sort of state where they say to themselves, okay, I'm going to be basically like they're, they'll be good all day. But they'll say like, oh, I was good all day today. You know, I didn't eat so-and-so, whatever. Or like um, anybody that's kind of ill-informed, they'll just sort of think to themselves, okay, I'll skip breakfast. I'll, I'll skip lunch. I'll just have like a water or, you know, this, that, or the other, whatever. Like they just think, okay, I just won't eat this and that. I, I'll skip lunch and I'll skip breakfast. I'll just eat when I get home. Or I'm not saying that's true. I'm just saying like stuff like that. That's just kind of what I think. But if that's you, if you've ever done something like that, or you know somebody who's done something like that, it's a fucking completely unsustainable approach. Because then what's going to happen is nighttime comes around, and you've gone all fucking day being hungry. You, you, you're just going to end up probably eating more food than you were going to eat total if you just spread it out throughout the day. Now, you know, tracking your macros, you're going to have to put some serious effort into it. And you're not just going to learn how to do it. Oh, I'm trying to stop fucking yawning. Holy crap, dude. I'm tired. But you're not just going to... It's not just going to click. It takes some fucking time to, you know, go from just a dude who eats whatever, you know, maybe never tracks his fucking macros, to weighing every fucking little bit of, you know, light mayonnaise that you're putting on your turkey sandwich and getting keto bread and plug in the fucking, uh, you get what I'm saying? Like that, there's a big, ran out of storage. There's a, there's a big difference between not fucking tracking your shit and tracking it. Now that difference is going to be the amount of effort it takes, but eventually you get used to it. Honestly, at this point, tracking my macros is just second nature. And even if I don't have food that has the nutrition label on the back, like let's just say I'm eating ground turkey or, you know, like chicken or like fucking going to a restaurant, get a burger or literally fucking anything. You know, once you've tracked your macros for long enough, uh, honestly, I feel like Neo in the Matrix. I don't see the burger anymore. I see the carbs and the fats and the, the proteins inside of it, you understand? Now, obviously, you know, not to that extent, but you get the idea. The longer you do it, the more proficient you're going to become at it, the easier it's going to be. Same thing with fucking lifting, and definitely the same fucking thing with your cardio. Dude, what the fuck? Come on. Not doing your... Oh, you're crazy. Not doing your fucking cardio. You are a fool. You can lead a lifter to the cardio bike, but you can't make him pedal. Honestly, out of all these videos, that's what I've learned the most. So, plan for me now is, uh, well, I've got a lot. I've got about 900 calories to play with before I go to bed. I think I'm going to cook up the pound of ground beef, strain off as much fat as possible, of course. You know, pour it into a bowl, fill it up with some zero, no, not zero sugar, but l no sugar added, sweet baby rays. So four grams of carb per serving. Not too crazy. You know, kind of mix that shit up. Have a little bit of a, I mean, just fucking ground beef with barbecue sauce mixed in. Tastes pretty good. Maybe make a, maybe make a grilled cheese with the keto bread and a slice of American. You know, it's, so you got to realize I follow the same fucking approach to weight gain, a bulking phase, as I do with weight loss, right? A fucking dieting phase. But the end goal of the diets are completely fucking opposite, right? The meals that I'm eating on a bulk, I'm, I'm close to the house, so I, I want to wanna say this before I actually get in there and park. But the meals that I eat on a bulk... The whole point of them is to, you know, eat as much food as possible, get as many calories into my fucking system as possible, but eat foods that are calorically dense. So it's easy for me to eat them. They don't make me feel like 
full unnecessarily, right? If I'm full in a bulk, that means I just ate a fuck ton of food. And at the end of the day, the only thing that's going to change whether or not you gain weight or lose weight is how much food you get into your fucking system. So name the, name of the fucking game on the bulk is eat enough food that your weight goes up. Now, some people, that's not very difficult for them. Some people are just naturally, they have enough, they have an appetite that's above their maintenance calorie level. So those are the dudes who, you know, it's easy for them to get big. And maybe they're just naturally softer, so it's a little harder for them to get lean. Now, for them, bulking, that's where they get, that, that's their shit. It just comes naturally to them. Now, on the opposite side of that spectrum is the dude who's like six foot 160 diced, but he, he can't fucking eat just because he naturally doesn't have an appetite that's particularly high. And that could be for, you know, whatever, just a variety of factors, you know, and that's just life. You got to be able to look at yourself as a lifter and find out which scenario is you and just say, all right, that's me. I know bulking's going to be fucking easy, but trimming down, that's fucking hard. And vice versa. So for me, the point with the diet when I'm cutting is, you know, I'm no longer trying to maximize the calories. I'm trying to maximize the amount that I'm satiated by the food I'm eating. I would never do a whole day of the cut and like get all my protein from, you know, like milk or protein shakes or... Well, actually, I guess that would be the most extreme case because then you're drinking all your protein. No, because that's not going to make me feel full at all. Even though I'm, I could still get 250 grams of protein in from like protein drinks, which, I mean, it's I'd definitely prefer a bit more red meats. Like I do like kind of an even mix of you know animal products for protein as well as well, I guess the whey is animal products as well. You get the idea. So same with the fats and the carbs. And the protein, you know, I do not want to fucking just drink it. I want to eat legitimate food. And like with the keto bread, it turns a sandwich, which, which could be like 30 grams of carbs into just fucking two, which is perfect. So I'm trying to eat foods that make me feel full, but have as little calories in them as possible. And, you know, by that nature, that's why I'm fucking making these, uh, you know, things like ground beef, this, that, and the other. Let me, uh. Oh, dude, I had a badass omelet this morning. It was 50 grams of protein worth of egg whites. Uh, I'll add some chopped lettuce into it, just kind of give it texture. And then I'll throw three slices of American cheese on it, flip it in half on itself. And then some no sugar added barbecue sauce on top. That's that's one of my fucking go-to dieting meals. I'll, uh, I'll break that down in the video later on. I'm, uh, later on. But... Yeah, the point of the diet when I'm trying to lose fat is I want to be as full as possible but eat as little calories as possible because I've only got so much to work with. So just by nature of those constraints, I'm going to be eating more whole foods, more foods that are, you know, volumetrically, well, voluminous but not having so much density in terms of their calories. You know, also, I fucking just slam a big ass Mediterranean salad with just like as little, uh, just like a little bit of olive oil and balsamic vinegar. Not for the fucking fact that like, well, I want to eat this because it's full of micronutrients. And it was like, dude, that's not the point. The point is, well, I'm fucking hungry. I don't have a lot of food to eat. I guess I'll eat some food that is just fucking, you know, high fiber and like, oh, not negligible carbs, but like, come on. If you don't, how many, how many carbs are in a fucking head of lettuce? You know what I'm talking about? Maybe 20 and a big ass, like, you know, the ball. Dude. So, you know, what drives my food choices is not the food itself. It's just how it plays into the end result and the end goal of whatever phase of lifting I'm in. So I'm trying to gain weight. That means I'm trying to fucking gain weight. And fuck, man, if I could just do that with, like, chicken and rice, that'd be the end of it. Eh, I, I probably wouldn't even do it, just because that's fucking... But you, you get what I'm saying. I'm trying to gain weight. And for me, as long as I don't put on, like, insanely excess body fat, 
the fucking food choices are not incredibly, uh, they're not chosen with an incredible amount of, what was the word I'm trying to think of? You get what I'm saying. But in that same sense, the diet is completely different purely due to the fact that it's trying to fulfill the exact opposite end goal. So that's basically my logic with it. And all, honestly, like, you know, I, I explain what I'm doing like in, in workouts and like when I'm doing reps, I try to say how I feel it and whatever else. You know, that's not, I, I, I've said this fucking probably 30 times so far across this, across all these videos. That is not a law. You know, I'm not saying that as, this is how you should do it, right? For the most part, if anything, what I'm really trying to preach is for you to figure out what works best for you. You know, I don't like the idea of, you know, having a coach control everything about my, you know, my workouts and my diet. I don't like that idea just because there's no way that he knows my body more than me. So if you're really serious about, you know, getting some progress in the gym, then you're going to be fucking finely honed to gradually, you know, approximate a routine, be it working out or be it like the workouts, the diet, the whatever else, the split. You're going to be able to sort of self-adjust towards the end goal of making progress. And, you know, sure, that's definitely going to take some work. You know, I'm not doing this passively. You know, honestly, over the last five years, I've made this point before too. If you were to do like a screen, you know, on your phone, how you do screen time. If you were to do an analyzation of my fucking brain on the topic that I've thought about the most, I can guarantee that it's, let's just call the whole category lifting related. So... That's uh, just a little bit of a synopsis, as it were. But more, more down to earth, more just talking about this particular video. Badass back pump. And I get to eat a big dinner before I go to bed. This is perfect. So I will freaking see you next time.